here on the bird tour. With my boy Alejandro E. E. Perdona me, what's your name? Leonel. Leonel, okay. Leonel. Got a little traffic jam here, huh? I'm a bit cansado though because my plane got in pretty late last night. Alright, man, we're getting some coffee before we head on this walk. Oh, wow, look at this. We have some bananas. The coffee plantation is still here? Yes. I just comido, freaking down, mad coffee, got that caffeine in my veins. Look at this place, this place is cool. Nocturnal. This is a really important butterfly. They collect this butterfly only 10 times in Nicaragua. Very, very rare. Is that a blue morpho right there? And then here's some of the birds we might see, right? So maybe collared Arasari. I love those guys. And which one is the national bird? Is is it the turquoise brown mott mott or the blue crown mott no, mott? This one. The okay. Turquoise brown mott. Maybe some trogan. We'll see. Look at that. So we just drank some of that. Yeah. The process of the coffee is very interesting because the picking process is by hand. The, the harvest season is between November, December, and January. I made it all the way through college without ever having coffee. And then I came to Central America and I started drinking it because I was like, dude, gotta drink the local stuff. I'm on this trail in this reserve that so few people have come to before. It's just so adventurous. I'm with my homeboys right here. They also kind of nicknamed this tree like the tree with uh, weird ears, right? It's freaking Indigenous cool. Indigenous people in Piccolomni science believe this tree can listen because the seed pot looks like an ear. Oh, right. Offer uh, food and grains and, you know, sacrifices for the trees because they believe everything in the tree can listen. The tree tells to the gods. So they pray for some bats nestled against this tree. It's really cool, I just blend right in with the tree. Look at those eye spots on that. And here's even a better look at the eye spots on the owl butterfly, meant to scare away, startle any predator that's going after it. We're just out here listening. We got a trogan up on this branch. Black-headed trogan. Trogans are so gorgeous, man. Elegant trogan up there. We got an owl over there. So what species of owl is this? Model. Modeled owl. That's freaking cool, man. It's really cool to see that owl. So the turquoise broad mop mop is a beautiful bird. I'll post a photo right now. What I've heard and what I've read is that they actually wag their tail back and forth in order to distract predators so that if a predator tries to attack one, it'll go after the part of its body that's moving. It'll go after its tail instead of its body and then it can lose its tail, you know, like a gecko does. So often one way to get birds to come in near you so you can get a better look at them is to play their song or their call. We got a dusty cat fly catcher right here. So we're playing the recording and these birds are going nuts. Yeah, I see the yellow warbler. A long build not in this reaction. Okay. So that was really cool. I couldn't get photos of all those, but when you play the playback, sometimes you just get birds swarming. The genus of this tree is called a Cecropia. Have you ever seen the movie The Land Before Time? No. With the baby dinosaurs? Yeah. Remember the leaves, like the tree stars that they're looking for, the uh -huh. food? Tree stars. It is very special. Tree star. <laughs> it is very special. They actually have a symbiotic relationship with ants, right? So ants will actually live inside the tree and they'll feed on, is it called malarian bodies? Malarian bodies are like these little packets of nectar or sugar, right? That the ants can eat for energy. On the flip side, ants will attack anything that uh, tries to eat its leaves, right? It's a mutualistic symbiosis. There's something up there. Buff-throated saltator. Yeah, 
when you go bird watching in a forest where you know there's lots of vegetation lots of branches lots of vines it can be really hard to see the birds what guides do professional guides like alejandro they use a laser pointer like this this is a green laser pointer there's Alejandro's laser, your eyes will go straight to the laser and you can see the bird. Legit, man, so we saw this guy, yeah, what a beauty. Entering in your sightings? eBird list. Oh, nice, man, you got the eBird app going, man. So what Alejandro's doing right now is he's entering all the sightings into eBird. It's this online database where you can enter in all the birds you've seen anywhere on the globe. Oh wow, look at this. And now we're getting some desayuno. What is that, gallo pinto? This? Yeah, wow. Staple food of Nicaragua right here, gallo pinto. You got your rice and beans, you got your eggs, and then you got your bread. Some people eat this with bread or tortillas. When I come down here, man, I'm always happy to eat that gallo pinto. Oh nice, you got a little bit of cheese here. And then this, what do you call this stuff again? Pitaya. Pitaya. It's mas cafe, much needed. I'm actually, the youngest bird watcher that Alejandro's ever taken on a tour. He was expecting me to be, what, probably in my 40s or 50s at least. Mm -hmm. So hey man, I take pride in that. Bird watching in another country, a place like Nicaragua, you get out here, you see beautiful birds in, in a unique exotic place, but then also you get to meet amazing people like Alejandro. He has so much knowledge, he can tell you all kinds of stories about the local ecology here, but also, you know, about Nicaragua. You know, it's just a first-hand experience. We're gonna go to some touristy parts and we're definitely gonna, you know, do the tourist party thing. But these experiences are what make trips like this really, really special, man. You said it's like cocinera. Muchas gracias. El desayuno fue muy riquísimo. Muchas gracias. Yo lo aprecio mucho.